Alex on till they text bullshit. What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another video. Special guest, needs no introduction, you know, this guy. He's climbing the ladder, man, I'm telling you, bro. I'm seeing big things for you in the future. The Ludaguna in the building, what's happening, my bro? Oh, man, you know I hate when you do that, man. Love yeah, for having you, so shy, you know. Why yeah, you yeah, I don't get that shy when you do that sort of stuff. We, we was calm, we was chatting normally, and then you go and do that. I'm like, oh, man. But I'm proud, <laughs> though, man. I've been, I've been waiting to come on your channel. It's been a minute, man. It's like, you tell me like Ozil. It's like, Robbie's oh, free, man. You free, man. It's getting better these days now. Nah. Like, yeah. It's getting first in football and that. Like, yeah, man. How you been, anyway? In fact, I came on your channel, didn't I? Start of the week. Yeah, Monday. yeah, yeah. Something we need to do frequently. Two shows, boom, boom. Let's get straight into it, bro. You know, you know oh, where man. we're gonna go, man. Let's. You know That's what? Before before Arteta was announced, I remember we spoke loads of times um, at YouTube and that when we was doing supporters club, and you was mm. always quite optimistic about Arteta, um, mm. which is a good thing. A lot of people were. I was always a little pessimistic. I don't know if Arsenal has just done that to me in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But. You know, he he started great the FA Cup, but this season I've been disappointed with him. I know he's a new manager. I know we've had difficult away fixtures, especially you know City, Liverpool, United. What have you made of um, the start to the season? I know you're a man who you you review tactics and them things. What what are you thinking about the style of football and the results we've had? I'm happy you said style because that was the first thing I was going to speak about. Like you said, like I still remain faith. The, the, the thing about Arsenal fans were weird. Some man, like like you, you said you, you wasn't really too keen on Arteta and I was. But you could yeah. obviously, you be your first, not even hold your hands up, just say, OK, he's proven me wrong. And likewise, yeah. if it doesn't work for him, I'll say, all right, cool. One thing I liked about him initially is, you know, he backed up his chat. Whatever he was saying in the press conferences, he was saying it. And I felt you could see little ingredients as to what sort of mill, the mill being the team he wanted to do. Like defensively last season, that was the priority. We saw something. And I thought, dare I say, I was a bit complacent. I said, creativity is a given because the way he spoke about Wenger and Arsenal and how he wants to play, and still to this day, he's mentioning 90, 100 goals. I thought, it's a given. Right now, you're yeah. trying to pattern defending. We can't defend. And I've been a bit disappointed because, again, I can't speak for everyone. I won't say we were great in an attacking sense last season. We were poor over everything. But we seemed a bit better. And now we just look way too conser conservative, um, way too negative. You know, you know me, I'm a man of balance. I like that he thinks about the other team and all of these things. But at the same time, if this was said under Una Emre or done under Una Emre, we'd all be looking at it a bit funny. So I haven't been impressed in terms of what I've seen in an attacking sense. As me and you speak about it all the time, you know, people sit here and they talk about Shabozlai and Alwar and William in the 10 and Emil and all of these young players. And I get it. I hear that they're all options. For me, I'm not seeing enough in terms of tactically why from, from what we're doing in terms of creativity to suggest it's as easy as these attacking man coming. Like when you saw defensively, you knew getting a Gabriel, getting a part eight, I see what he wants to do. And I think yeah. his handbrake is just harming the team. It's like, it's no coincidence that not one attacking player is excelling. They're all poor from mm. their own selves, but no one's excelling. You know, Saka's the only one looking a bit consistent, looking decent. That's a byproduct of Arteta. So he's got to figure it out. And for me, I said, in his role, he's going to have to learn quick. He's, as much as I don't want to admit it, you know, he's a novice, he's a new manager. Not, none of that was said last season he was doing well. For me, it was, I always preached, it's the mistakes he makes. He needs to learn fast. I don't think he's learning fast enough right now. I think he needs to settle on a back three, what, back three, back four, whatever, oh, and move yeah. from there. I, think there's, I don't think there's any givens in terms of the squad, which is a good and a bad thing. It's like, I don't really know what team we're going to get week in, week out. And I like adaptability, but at the same time, Something that Arsenal's been lacking. We lack stability. You look at Liverpool. Yeah. If they win the league this year, you know, it's great. Even greater for me, considering the amount of injuries. And I know when they look back, Mane, Salah, all of these guys' goals are going to be what's in Premier League years. But look at that back five, how fit they were. It was more or less the whole same 11 week in, week out. I'm not saying I want that at Arsenal, but I don't think he's settled. And a lot of things that he's mm -hmm. with right now, I would have thought coming into the job from last season, you would have been able to know these things. Like you still don't know looks that you know your best 11. You ain't got mm -hmm. a plan in terms of attacking sense. I'm not really seeing any attackers excel. We're still talking about the same old Aubameyang out wide. Can Lacazette get contracts? There's enough. There's there's still not enough conclusions drawn for me. So I'm disappointed in that regards. But until something dramatically changes, my guy, I still maintain faith in him. He just got to face the music and learn from his mistakes during this period. 
I mean, it's something you said there that um, I've spoke about as well. No attacking player is doing well under him. The only attacking player doing well is Saka. And when I see Saka play, I see freedom in his game. I see a young player that is playing on what he knows. And I think that's why he's excelling so much. You even see yesterday he gets man of a match for England. He looks comfortable. He looks like he's playing his natural game. When I see a Bamiang, Lacazette, Pepe, it's like they're on edge. They don't want to make a mistake. They want to follow out tactics. Why do you think a manager that played under Arsene Wenger, coached under Pep Guardiola, two very attacking managers, why do you think he's being so, I don't want to say negative, but defensive and playing with that handbrake on at Arsenal? First and foremost, my guy, he has to just fit whatever, you know, there's the one reality that his tactics just simply aren't working. Whatever he's trying to do is just not working right now. And it yeah. goes back to what I was saying when we was on our stream and what I've been banging on. I don't think he's convinced about any of these players too tough. Like, I think he believes in Lacazette. I don't think he's convinced on his credentials. There's some, I think he believes in Aubameyang and clearly he knows how vital he is. But for whatever reason, when he initially came in, he said he had some concerns over him. And yeah. there's clearly some, okay, cool. If there's, if there's, if he genuinely feels Aubameyang out wide, gives you balance, cool. But I don't believe that. I think there's a there's an aspect of a Bamian's game for, for a 38 game period. He's not 100 100 convinced on. I don't yeah. think he really likes William like that. But William is consistently inconsistent and average. Pepe is a headache. He's very hot and cold. I know he hasn't been given too many opportunities this season, but he's hot and cold. So when you've got a bag of that, you look at our defense. He's not really convinced over anyone. I think that's why he's got a handbrake and he's on this stability thing. I think if he had better players, there'd be more freedom. But saying that, I haven't seen anything from a coaching aspect. I just think yeah. he's not convinced on any sort of play. I don't think he's convinced on our on our ability to defend from wide areas. That might be why he shafts a Bamian out there. And for me, I mentioned balance. Football's a fickle game. You know, to say the same way you brought in William, if William in his 10 appearances, he'd done nothing. If he had 10 goals, 10 assists or something, we'd be screaming, yo, he's using what the ancient thing properly. What a signing. But he hasn't, bro. So we're saying, oh, it's a retirement home. It's this, that and the other. <laughs> the balance thing I mentioned, if Lacazette is scoring goals, fair enough, I think Aubameyang's the better striker. But if Lacazette is scoring goals, bro, you can say, all right, cool. That's why he's out wide. Football's a fickle game. Lacazette's not doing the job. Neither is Aubameyang. So move Aubameyang through the middle sort of thing. I, I can't put my, my trust, my hat on it. But I just say he's not learning from his mistakes. And I just think his 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 game plan right now, and I don't want to seem reactionary because it seems like off the United game and our defeat, we've kind of been on this. But that's just what I believe. It's like you look at it. I said in my preview at the Villa game, I thought he would go with, and I'm not saying they would have won, but I would have thought he would have swapped Xhaka for El Nene and brought in David Luiz just because, you know, we want more possession. It's a bit of a different game. Games like that, we can, not that we can assert ourselves and quite rightly so, we failed to against Villa, but we'd be offer a bit more in the attacking stage he's he's rubbed them both out really you know David Luiz wasn't meant to play against Man City away holding got injured Xhaka is out of United away so I don't think he's convinced on anyone and for me if you can't be convinced on anyone fans can't really be convinced on you because I just think fans want to see building blocks I want yeah. obviously some fans got excited and we have to keep balance he has won trophies here but we were seeing building blocks we we're seeing all fans want at basic level is just some encouragement like you know to yeah. look week in week out we're looking better. And I think that's all escaped us this year. I think the players have to take some blame, but I just feel Arteta's done a, tried to maybe do too much and done too little. We knew it was an important summer. Mm. He's now, he's, I keep calling him head coach. He's now a manager. And I feel as much as the board can do more, the players can do more, there's a lot of accountability on, on him. You haven't, not yeah. that Ozil would be doing anything mad. You didn't register him. You didn't bring in a man. Mm. And right now, I'm not seeing anything in a creative way. So there's three possibilities. You're not showing me something. That's why you're facing this. So, I don't think he's helped himself, bro, man, at all. No, no, I agree with you, bro. I mean, it's all right saying like, because I agree with you, I don't think he likes and trusts a lot of these players in his team. But at the same time, as a manager, sometimes you've got to work with what you've got. There is still quality there. We have got the most expensive front three in the league um, in Aubameyang, Lacazette and Pepe. So even if you're thinking in the summer, you know what, I might move Lacazette on. You've got to get something out of him until the summer. That's what the best managers do. Um, I kind of look at it and I think what I'm seeing with Arteta at the moment is maybe a guy who is a good coach, but you can see that he's never managed because I think man management is totally different to coaching. And I see so many question marks in our team at the moment. You know, Saliba, what's happening there? Why is Ainsley playing for England but can't get a game for Arsenal? Why 
Why is Meza Ozil not registered? Why is Aubameyang playing on the left? I mean, Aubameyang scored last night for Gabon playing through the middle. Um, I read something a few years ago that Manchester City approached Dortmund to sign um, Aubameyang yeah, uh, as a potential replacement, and they backed out of it. At the time, Arteta was there with Pep, so I'm sure they discussed what they liked about him and what they disliked about him. So, like you said, when Arteta came in, he already kind of made it clear that he wasn't totally sure about Aubameyang. So, it's interesting why he uses him off the left, but let's look for solutions. You know, I've kind of given him a bit of a bashing this week already, Arteta. <laughs> How do you think moving forward? We got Leeds away, Wolves at home, Tottenham away next three games. Tough games, man. What do you want to see Arteta do in terms of formation, the playing style, personnel? What would you like to see him do in those next three games? Uh, before I begin, you made an interesting point about man management, and I think it highlights how he's learning on the job because for his man management, initially he had Ozil playing well. Towards the end of last season, even though it's, it's kind of the flip side, he had Pepe doing all right. He reintegrated Jacob. But then I look at it, like you said, he's not really handled it well. So this is why I always say who you surround him with is important. We need people that have been around the block that were coaching way before this man was even in diapers. Because you not look around him. One thing we said about Wenger is there yes men. I don't know his... I don't yeah. know his his people them around him too tough I know we've got people been at United I know we've got a 24 year old that's done some great stuff but I don't are they are they yes men you know are they telling him what he's doing yeah. is the right thing for the sake of it or are they saying yo this that and the third you know Ferguson and Pep they had people that were managers kind of in their own right on their coaching mm. stuff so for me it's about nipping things in the bud very quickly and I'm not too sure in relation to our next three games you know I don't want to look at as much as I want to speak about Spurs and Wolves I can only in my head register Leeds because that's our next game I don't think he'll change too much tactically in terms of formation I would like to see four at the back um, we can't read too much into the sake of the fact of they lost 4-1 and, you know, they have the crazy game against Liverpool. You know, they have conceded a bit of goals. So that defence is good. You know, big up Leeds, big up Bielsa. But they're not perfect. We can get at them. I And with that, I expect to see a bit more, you know, two touch, one touch, passing into space. Damn right, just having shots. I think he'll still go five at the back, my guy, personally, because... You know, he's not going to have too much time to work with these players. Some men are injured, some men are in training. Other people are flying around and doing all of these sort of things. Even someone like Bellerin, who's, you know, never in the Spain squad. He's now been called up. So you can't work with your defence. So I don't think too much is going to change. Still probably see a back five. You know, probably I would like to see Partey now, Nene. Um, I would like to see Maitland-Niles given a run at right back. You know, Bellerin played well against United. He was terrible in his last game. And that's the age-old thing with Bellerin. One minute yeah. he's good second minute he's looking shaky you know he looked good in his international for Spain but if he plays the next game for Spain is the consistent level is going to be there and I guess he's still young at 25 but we've been doing this since the man is 18 with all due yeah. respect to him so it's a it's a bit of a myth I think don't think too much can change I think all he can do is change you know just like I said more passes, more worrying about what we can do going further forward. And psychologically, all of these players need to get together because there's a lot of talking. You must have been looking at August at this period. There's no time to feel sorry for ourselves. Let's do the analytics and what we need to do for the Villa game, but it's gone now. You know, you can't feel sorry for yourself. We've got, Lee, like you said, Leeds, Wolves, Spurs. These are all tough teams, teams that would love to ruin an, an Arsenal fans day. Teams that yeah. are trying to accomplish their own things in this preseason. I mean, in this season. So for them, I say psychologically, I know players have been in bad form, but as much as I'm not the biggest fan of Lacazette anymore, I sound like I'm doing him dirty. There's a reason why we got to this point. Aubameyang, you have not turned into a bad striker overnight. Arteta, half of the question marks that I and a lot of people are saying were not said six months ago. My point being, you don't turn bad overnight. Just learn your lessons and psychologically pull yourself. You know, I always say in my, in my videos, when you're batting against, against a corner, you either fight back or curl into a ball. Now we're going to see what these players are really made of. If you want top four, you have to do the difficult things. And the difficult yeah. thing starts against Leeds because Leeds are not going to give you three points. I, I, mm. I always mention this as well. The one, one of the games of games of the season for me personally is City versus Leeds for that second half. Great game. Pep, bro, Pep was shook. Pep he was. was. He was bringing on Ake, he was bringing on, I swear he brought on three defenders. Fernandinho, come on, I could be wrong. He was scared. So if he's shook, you know, well, going for us. Oh, Saturday, Saturday, yeah. <laughs> we need to turn up, you know, and really weird, but it's almost like we're better away from home, man. And there's no fans there. I don't know what it is, man. And it, I guess we're just reactive. 
you know. We beat yeah. United because we had a system and because they were poor, but fundamentally we were reactive, you know. We were, you know, P P Pogba made a mistake. Our reaction to that is to score the penalty. We never score goals from open play. That's why we've done better in these FA... Obviously, we have scored goals in the FA mm. Cup games, but that's why we do better because we think of Liverpool. We think of the gaps we can exploit when they're doing what they're doing, like for the goal Aubameyang scored in against City. We're not proactive enough, and that's one thing I wanted to see from, from Arteta. We're proactive in relation to defending, but we are not creating chances in abundance. Like, could you imagine? Oh, fair enough, it died under Arsene Wenger. But if you was to ask me 10 years ago, 2010, we weren't the best of club. But creating, scoring, you know, Wenger ball, all of these things we're crying out for, it was there in abundance. The, dare I say, we were so complacent because they were a given with our club. Like, yeah. where had yeah. them values gone, fam? It's a madness. Do you know what? Under Wenger, we actually had too much of it. You know, we used to have like Rosicki, Haleb, Fabregas. It was like, bro, get someone who can tackle. But get a party. Could get, it. It. get a party in there. I just like, I don't know. Like, I've been really, I'm looking at Arteta and I'm thinking, bro, like, listen, like, you need to be less stubborn. I think because all the fans are almost saying, put Aubameyang through the middle. It's like he's saying, you know what? You lot are telling me what to do. I'm going to do something else. You know when, you know when a man don't want to listen? But yeah. I hope he changes that philosophy a little bit because I don't want to see Arteta go, to be honest. I think we what need... To, right? You know what I mean? You said the word stability. We need stability at the club. I think we've taken steps forward. We got Aubameyang to sign a deal. We got Partey. We got Gabriel. You know, we've made good additions there. I do think we're building something, but... I feel like it's very easy to lose a dressing room quickly, especially when you haven't been a manager before. Because mm. if we keep having bad results, all of a sudden players are going to look at him and go, you know what, I like him on a personal level, but this brother, he might not be the man. You know, if you're a Bamiang, this is the last contract of your career at the top level. You can't afford to waste two years under Arteta playing your left wing and we're not doing nothing. So... He's got to get it right quickly. Um, just just looking ahead at um, Arteta, if we didn't get top four this year and we don't win the Europa League, <laughs> would you would you um, would you fire him? Because ultimately, people said Emery, you know, no top four, no playing style. They got rid of him. What, what would you do? You've kind of answered the question there, and I think that's the ultimate thing owner Emery died by. If Emery had like a clear philosophy, clear playing style, something for the fans to buy into, he would still be here. It depends how you look at Emery. You know, some people, I do think he's not underappreciated, but people look like it is a complete failure. It wasn't. Yeah. Where he went wrong is, unlike Arteta, I think he was both too stubborn and at times he tried to switch things up too tough and ultimately listen to too much um, voices in, in, in and around him. But he did have something, you know. We missed out on top four that season. I think we missed out by a point because One we... Point. You know, that, that that's the players and Emre for us because, you know, that tells you the players were short. But at the same time, you look at the game. Remember, we was there. Palace. Emre Palace. done a madness, you know. Them last eight games, mm. Emre was tweaking, you know. Yeah. It all depends for me and speaking for me only how Arteta finishes, like the fashion we, we end the season in. If, you know, the creativity is there, we're still looking a bit better defensively. <laughs> you, know what, you know what, because, you know, when... Um... You know, when Grealish chopped back on um, yeah, Rob yeah. Holden, I said, yeah. yo, he just sent Rob Holden down yeah, the yeah. road, man. He's on Holloway Road yeah, in he Tesco. From there. He <laughs> won't even make it back, like. <laughs> Especially if he's in and around Islington. I know there's gentrification, but Holden, the way he was defending, I, I think he'd get long for him if he goes far to council estate still. Oh, right. Yo, for yeah. real. <laughs> the only thing that keeps Holden for me, man said Holden, the only thing that keeps Arteta for me is just the playing style. If 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 the philosophy and there's just ultimately something to buy into, mm. and we, we we dramatically look a better club now than twelve months ago. Cool, keep your job. Let's analyze where we went wrong as a team, and he has to face his music. But cool, we'll go again. If it's this more of the same, what we're doing now, and and what we're doing and carrying on, then you've probably got to start looking at bringing in replacements and things. Will we do that? I'm not too sure because I don't. I wouldn't say this season isn't relevant. He probably would lose his job if he done a madness. But at the same time. He's now become the manager, first manager in a while. You see other little things of him kind of getting his feet into the club and, and more yeah. long-term stability sort of thing. You know, he's probably, the new contract will probably be in the work. So it tells me, and you heard, um, what's it, David Ornstein the other day say, Arsenal are well ahead of their summer planning in 2021. Now that can all be done ahead of Arteta, but at the same time, if you're whatever player out there, naturally you're going to say, what's what I'm going for the manager? Things can change in football, obviously, but you're not going to want to, 
tie up things if you don't know what's going on. So he's probably here for the long term. And I, I would think this season isn't too relevant. I think he'd, he'd get to hide behind the whole COVID and this and that and the contracts and stuff. Yeah. Again, it all it's all how he finishes. And I want him to do the business, but I don't think he'd be sacked necessarily. It all depends. If he does a falling off thing and the fans really get mad, then of course he could lose his role, man. Mm. Do you know what? You make a great point there. And, and now I'm thinking about it. Unless we finish like 8th, ninth, 10th, I think Arteta will still be here next season. I think they've... I don't actually think the owners genuinely believe we're getting top four. I think they look at the club. If you've finished eighth and you've brought three players in, one of them is somebody who Chelsea didn't really want. Two players are not really going to make the difference from, from eighth to the top four when you think Chelsea spent nearly 200 million, Man United bought five players, City and Liverpool, we can't even see them, you know. Yeah, because we can't even see them. We can't even see them. We can't even yeah, you know, we can't even see them. So I don't actually think the board believe we're going to get top four. I think maybe they think we could win a Europa League, um, but I think they're looking yeah, at him for the long term. And he's going to use that thing of like, look, Ozil, Socrates, Mustafi, Luis, all these guys are out of contract. So we've got a massive summer coming up in terms of the money we'll have available. Mm. Do you think that we missed a bit of an opportunity in the summer in that? There was no financial fair play. You look at your Real Madrid's, Barcelona's, Bayern Munich's, they hardly signed anyone. Most of them, they they had, you know, their wage bill was too high. They couldn't buy. I look at someone like an hour. If that was the ball player that we identified. You go and get it done. I don't think next summer we can sign him. I think Real Madrid, someone like that's going to come and get him. So you might have had one opportunity to get him and you've, and you've left it. So do you think... We should have done one or two more deals in, in the summer window. Well, for me, I think the Cronkies are just... And I know I'm not talking about the honest football fan that is American. The real passionate fans, they're all over. But when yeah. I see the Cronkies, they just scream franchise to me. They're just on this <laughs> Arsenal franchise. You know, we've got the brand. We've got the mandem. You know, we go, we do little social media business. Fair mm. enough, you know. As much as Arsenal have been failures and stuff, we're winning FA Cups. Occasionally, we're winning big games. We're still talked about. You know, a lot of influencers support the club and what. We're just yeah. on this franchise thing. We're not... They don't want to be winners. Winning... It's, it's like winning the lottery. Everyone would like to win the lottery. Or everyone would like to be rich. Not too many people are going to show the determination to produce a product to become financially free. I don't think they want to do that. If they did, like you said, we've got a free hit. Obviously, yeah. we've got our own financial issues we're going through. We've got the own COVID impacting us and stuff. But like you said, you know, not just our world, just in terms of the manager. If you want top four and you really want to help someone, you look at this squad and you know it's not levels. I didn't see a real push in relation to moving players on. We knew moving players on was central. I know it's not as easy as this, but if you get, and not to say El Nene, because he's in form at the moment, but realistically, he was someone the board probably would have liked to have moved on. If you got a 10 mil for him, you moved off Mustafi for a 10 million or five or whatever. Could that be not placed towards going and getting Fingy? Going and getting Arawa? Yeah. Just go out and get it done or doing what else we need to do. You hear you hear talking about a right-sided centre-half. You hear talking about another midfielder by Ornstein. Go and bring these players, you know. You can't, you know, you've a, a chef is only as good as the ingredients he's got. Yeah. You can't be bringing man Aldi stuff and expecting him to do Mitchell and star things. It's not, no matter how much he seasons it, no matter how good he is, he might do a thing. It might taste nice, you know, we might show a bit of relevance. But somewhere down the line, you get what you pay for. You know, man was saying Suarez and, and William and these were shrewd additions and stuff. You get what you pay for. Yeah, it looks like we've got some experience and we've got a Premier League proven man. But no, you've got an inconsistent pension on playing right wing now. That is, it's that simple. <laughs> Luis, fam, he's been decent in part. He has been decent, yeah. But he's shown his level, you know, yeah. statistics. How much penalties has he given away? You don't bring in a man like that if you really want to fix your defence. And then we act don't. surprised when we look at the statistics for who is making mistakes and how we're making mistakes. It's not it's it's not making sense, you know. Like you said, you said with Maitland Niles, I don't get it. Maitland Niles must believe in Sutton because you know he stayed, he stayed, he's done a U-turn and he stayed. But why isn't he playing the Saliba thing? Okay, cool, Saliba's not ready. First week, two weeks of the summer preseason, get man out. It's looking reactive. I'm not yeah. going to say we only signed Partey because it was a free, it was a activating his release clause. But you look at it, the board probably said, you know what, we know we're getting Partey. One thing I'll give this club, when they do their talks and they get encouragement, they'll get it done. So they've probably yeah. tied up the loose ends with Partey. All summer, they've probably played a game of poker. 
Let's get him cheaper. Let's pretend we're going for other targets to try and, and make and make Atletico get, get pussyfooted or whatever. Then they said no. We've get then gone long and behold, we said, all right, cool, it's a release close thing. And then it takes away from not signing a creative man, you know. And for me, if you really want to get top four, do you not have several, several plans? I don't mind not yep. getting out of war. I know I wanted him, bro, but I don't mind that. I don't mind not yep. getting shit like but you should be bringing up 10 or so targets. I know we're losing scouts, bro, but are you telling me in the months before the end of the season, X, Y, Z are not coming to you and saying, yo, there's my man from Spain, my man from this place, mm. this place. You know, his club are saying they'll shot him. Where's the contingency plans? It's like, there's you never get Certainly. the right, there's a consistent plan. We hide behind this young player thing. And it's like, does it look like there's a plan with these young players? I think Smith Rowe's going to go out on loan in Jan. I want to be he wrong. Is. No in game time. What are going for Joe? What are, you... are we making Joe? What are we doing with him? He's doing up Europa, but are we doing his thing? At least with Chelsea, look at Chelsea's youngsters. There was a plan to play them in the first team. Obviously, things happen and they got a bit of luck, but you, they, you see James go out on loan, Mount go out on loan, Tammy, them man, they have a cons a consistent experience and now they're playing properly. Now look at really look like we have a development thing for our players when they get to the first team. It's a madness, man. Bro, you know what? You... you... You, you've, you've set me up so nicely there because you said so many things there that I was thinking, you know what, you're right there. Because funny enough, I watched that England game last night and I never usually watch England games. And I'm watching that Reese James and I'm going, yo, this guy is a serious baller. Like, I'm looking at him thinking, this guy's way better than Hector Bellerin. Bro, Do you know what I mean? And we've had him for years. Like, you're right. I, because I look at a lot of these young players at Arsenal and I think, do you know what? You've got talent, you know, but you can see that you haven't played enough football. You know, you're still yeah. making naive mistakes that you wouldn't have made if still you were in 40 games somewhere. There you go. Smith Rowe goes out on loan for a season. I hear he was one of Huddersfield's best players in a bad season for them. Oh, Teta's broken him up as well, bro. I'm going to use him. I want to do there this. You know. He's been injured, but fair play. And he can't get a kick. And now they're saying, oh, we're going to loan him. William Saliba, you sign him, wait a year, bring him in. Then you're going to loan him, but you don't loan him. Then you don't register him, but Arteta's saying, I wish I did register him. And then now they're saying they're going to loan him out in January. I mean, what is who is making you see when decisions? Arteta, bro, you see when Arteta says that stuff, it makes me feel like it's what Jose used to do and Pep. Like when they gas players and use that mad language, they're not using them. Like Jose, he mm. said it's a crime if Lewis Baker don't play them and they are gassing it. He gasses up Maitland now is about in midfield. You're not going to play there, bro. He's not. Is up Eddie, he's not gonna play properly like that. When when Arteta does a bit too much in his press conferences, like when he says, Oh, I was I was very upset to leave Saliba, it made me sick, and blah blah blah. You knew what was gonna happen. You don't just make these decisions overnight, you know. Like we mm. you, you heard Arteta, and I'm not trying to bash Arteta, but I hear we got loan manager. I hear Arteta was chatting, yeah. was chatting to um uh, um Saliba consistently. So that tells me dialogue, bro. If there's consistent dialogue, you know what level he's at. So when that season ends, yeah, it was disrupted, but you you, you don't just wake up in August when we're planning and say, Oh, I don't like the look of Saliba. You know full well what sort of player him and Smith Rowe are gonna be in August, you know. And we've and we've mm -hmm. not really done what we've needed to do in that regard. We ain't got no plans. It's like, yeah, the man and the man them have been injured, but with these young players. Apart from Saka Martinelli and obviously Eddie, because he's the only out and out striker, everybody fit, need to win game, like life, job on the line. Are any of these young players in the squad, you know, and he started Nelson in, in oh. big games last season, but not too many are in it. Not too many are in it. Do you know what? I just wanted to read this comment because um, Michael's saying, I've supported the club since 1953 and this is the worst yeah. year ever. I mean, that is damning. From oh, a guy right. who's watched Arsenal a lot longer than us, bro. So, yeah. but hey, man, that's crazy. Um, big up Gio. He said, um, I will take Willock at Milan. Keep up the great work. Thank you for your comment. Um, I think Give people will take Joe Willock. Give us Benassi think... and take Joe Willock. Benassi is a big boy in this. Come on, bro. Gio, come yeah, on. He's, he's improved a lot. Taib said, Deluded loves a woman in a miniskirt. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Who does? Who does I mean, man? that's not your thing, fair play, but who doesn't? <laughs> oh, dear. I, I mean, don't want to get wrapped up in this. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get wrapped up in that, bro. I mean, when you're talking about the young players there, that's something that I really expected Arteta to be on. I thought, you know, since you're a coach, you know, we hear the stories about Sané and Sterling. You, I always think Nelson, Pepe, Martinelli, these guys you would want to work with. I mean, Martinelli wasn't getting picked Too really tough. before the injury. 
And and I think he's with Saka probably the best youngster at the club. Like, why is he favouring Willian and and these kind of players who even Bellerin, like these guys who've been at the club and kind of failed at the club before. Do if you know I'm what? To Arsenal, I, I don't want to see Bellerin. I don't want Jacko. I don't want people that have actually. These are the players that have taken us into the Europa League from the Champions League. Why do you think he's sticking with with these men? Because I think it's it's one of two things. I think, at this, to be fair to him, the young players have to be ready. But it goes back to the yeah. point I've been saying. He's a coach. We all know the days of Wenger and them and they are gone. You have yeah. to kind of not necessarily work with what you have because you can't achieve too much. But this is where coaching, I need to see players small, small, small improving like we were saying last season. Collectively, I need to see what we're doing. I think he finds he finds the pressure. He, he's, it's the pressure. He needs, a, he needs immediate results. You know, that's why he's going with the 33-year-old William. That's why he's going with that. David Luiz, two proven Premier League players. That's why he's persistent with a Bamian on the left and not going with Pepe, who's inconsistent. You know, that's why he's favouring Lacazette. And I know he's played him ahead of Eddie and Ketia. He's playing these guys. And it's to be fair, he needs immediate results. And I said that at the start of this season. I don't really want William, but I don't mind William coming in. You know, I want a Bamian to play through the middle. All them guys that are on the wrong side of 30 or late 20s, what we do with them in the short to medium term sets up the playing field and the level and the calibre of players, the likes of Saka, Martinelli, obviously Tierney's not too much older, potentially Pepe are going to play with, you know. I would have thought William would be playing a bit better. I thought he was of a thing where, all right, cool, I'm going to play young players, but the Williams, the Aubameyans, hate mentioning Aubameyans with William. You, yeah. man, help us immediately, innit? Like, in the next two yeah. seasons, we need to consistently get champs. We need to go further in the Europa. You, man, help us right now. And I just think he favours... I just think he favours the consistent mediocre performances these these experienced players will give him ahead of the hot and coldness. Like Pepe might mm. be 10 out of 10 one week, five the rest. You don't know what you're getting with Eddie. And Saka's just shown he's an exception to the rule, in it? He's on the folding yeah. thing. He's just, I'm too certain. The, the young thing don't apply to me. I'm not the average sort of youngster. I, yeah. I don't know for Martinelli as well, because it's like you said, I don't know. Like, what was it? Like, maybe, I can't remember the lineup too tough them times, but he was on the bench. I'm sure it was a Bamian through the middle. No, a Bamian on the left, Lacker on the right. Yeah. He was on, Lacker through the middle. He was on the right hand side. Who was he missing out from? Probably Pepe or Nelson, really, wasn't it, when he came in? Yeah, he persisted with Pepe a lot still. Do you know the funny thing? I heard that. Um, I mean, I don't know whether this is gospel, but I heard Martinelli was one of the three who refused the pay cut. To uh, yeah, with Socrates and Ozil. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe he might not even get too much. Yeah. You know, crazy, bro. It's true, it's true. It's, that could be a shout, you know. That could, I don't want to speculate because, like yeah, you said, allegedly, you know, allegedly, it would, you know? make, it would make sense. Big up everyone in the comments, by the way. Don't forget to smash a like, subscribe to both channels as well, oh, Deluded's man. channel as well. I want to ask you about um, an experiment that seems to be ending, and that is Lacazette. We spoke about him a number of times, I think. Oh, well, I hope I'm speaking for you in that. He's somebody we've kind of supported over the years. You know, I like his attitude. I feel like he's, he never shirks the responsibility and the work. Um, but he just seems to be, how can I say? I mean, he looks to me as if he's getting worse. i got to be honest. Uh, 37 goals in the Premier League in three seasons. That is not good enough for somebody who costs 50 million, you know, his actual goal figures are no better than Olivier Giroud. Medium. He's got a, he's got a year left in the summer. He's on 150 grand a week. He turns 30 in May. What do you do with him in the summer? I think Arsenal should be looking to move him on. I do think they are. I yeah. mean, it's it's clear. You know, Martinelli's been given improved terms. You know, yeah. He's given a new deal to David Luiz. Obviously, he's had Saka and Abamian. There's no coincidence there's been a lack of movement I mean, in his regards. That's 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 quite telling, really and truly. I think they might even let him run down his deal, you know, because I think, I, I think I, like I said, we should, in terms of resale value, we should be selling him. But looking at the current dynamic, free transfer seems to be what's going on. And they might look at it as he might be, what, 31, 30, 30 odd by the time his career, his contract's done. You know, by then he would have served his purpose, won a couple of cup games. I do think you need a plan B striker, as we can all see. You need a striker, a recognised number nine in the team, to which I yeah. think Lacazette like could do that. In terms of how much we're looking to get, you'd be lucky to get 25, you're hoping for up to 40 million for Lacazette. Like, 
as you've said, we've supported him. You know, even when he's done badly, we, 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 we've kind of shut up about it because he's got player of the year and he's done things. But it's, it's football, isn't it? You're not doing the job. You're not doing the job. He doesn't look like he's going to ever return to scoring goals. He looks like he's lost a yard of pace. You know, he still presses well. He does all that defending stuff. But I don't, as much as I recognise it, Eddie can do that. You know, someone bringing someone better and Eddie can do that. I don't really want to, you know, pressing, working hard, playmaking and linking up with teammates for a striker, especially a top class player. I rate it. I'm not underestimating, underestimating it. But that should be a given. I shouldn't be praising man for that. You should not. You should The whole things is not good enough. And it's for me, like I said, it's a bit of a story, man, in that there's themes. He has injuries. You know, he has a bit of form. Managers aren't really feeling him. He's always being subbed. You know, he goes through the confidence thing. You know, he's, he's never been a consistent goal scorer like that. He's just... Ultimately, that's that's what, why for a number of years we was linked with him and didn't go for him. And that's yeah. why it's any coincidence for as good as he was at this club, six months into his time at Arsenal, lo and behold, you bring in Aubameyang and he becomes yeah. a secondary man. If this man does what the other man in the Premier League can do, you know, even Danny Ings at this moment in time, we mm. don't, Aubameyang's not a thing at Arsenal. He might go to City or stay at Dortmund or whatever. Or he might have always just played on the flanks. And if if Lacazette was scoring, you know, we might be saying, we might not even be considering Aubameyang through the middle because that's the one luxury yeah. Aubameyang's got right now. He's a poor, he's playing poor, but we all know he can score goals and he's not playing in that position. You have to, you have to move him on, man. You have to, you have, you have to move him on. You have, you have to, bro. You have to. Mm. You have to, like, no, it's, it's true. Do, do you know what? I want to, I want to throw two things back at you, right? Because right. if you, if you're in Lacazette's corner, if you're his agent now, you might say, number one, they don't create enough chances. You know, I'm, I'm starving of some, some games. Also very true. Number two, do you think we could ever put a formation out with Lacazette and Aubameyang in a two? Maybe a three-five-two if he likes playing three at the back. Because then you got your wing backs, you got three in midfield, two up front, no out and out wingers. Do you think that could actually work, or do you just think he's done out here? It could work. I actually, at least for this season or in general, I've always said, you know, for me it's one up front, but I want us to be able to play with a two. Just in games to games, we might need it. Same way we go with three at the back. But I think generally for our team. We need balance, man. And I think the balance is a bad man through the middle. You either bring in a goal scoring wing. I know it's easier said than done, but, you know, someone that could put up or, or do a, what Son's doing or Mane's doing or Salah's doing. And you go with my man through the middle. I do. Like I said, I still think you need another striker in that side to cause problems. And, you know, everyone needs to pull their weight. I do think we could go with a two by guy, but for me, at this moment in time, I think it's a one striker thing. I'm not really trying to say that. And as I don't think I don't think Lacazette is in our strongest lineup. I don't think we can. I know there's a lot of talk about support striker in and, and, and 10 and that. Lacazette does link up well. You know, look at all these 17, 18 pass moves. He's is he is involved, but does he really create to the scale? You know, I know he, he isn't getting the ball. That's one luxury all of them have. He's not getting the ball. But at the same time, but the, the best players, when it's not happening, they go seeking. None of these yeah. players have really gone seeking for it. And Even exactly. And you look at some of the chances Lacazette has had, they haven't been too much, but they've been some easy chances. And it's easy yeah. for you to sit here saying that. But I'm sure Tierney's put in a couple of bad boy balls. There was one he just needed to head it home. And I'm not even on to him about the Lindelof one because that one got deflected. But you yeah. know, creating chances and all these things, it's all air. Like you have you have had opportunities and I don't know, man. I don't want to say he doesn't train well because Arteta talks about he's a stickler for training. But yeah. when you hear these rumours about doing balloons and I don't care about a man's physique, but he does look a bit bigger. He does look a bit lethargic. Is he looking after himself more? And that's the difference between him and a Bamian, regardless of ability, bro. Because I don't know if it's a Bamian living in Italy, what he eats or whatever. But you look, I'm not saying Lacazette don't, but you can tell evidently a bad man looks one of them, man. He's very cautious as to what he, he puts in his body. And mm. with Lacazette like, approaching 29, you've still got a number of years left, but you're going to have to change your game. You're going to you, you lose a, lot, a yard of pace and things like that. It's, so I don't really think he's tailored his game enough. You know, he's been a good player for us, but fundamentally, like you said, um, he just underwhelmed. He's not been the 52 man. We didn't sign him to assist man and back up dance in these in these iconic goals. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, bro. Like, you're True. gassing up these goals more than him. Like, yeah. come on, bro. Like, it's, it's, got, it's got sad because, it you know, we can bring up a bag of strikers in the Prem that might not be too good, but they're doing better than Lacazette. And it hurts. Yeah. 
bro. It, it hurts me. We at some point, Arsenal fans were saying Lacazette's the best striker in the league. Lacazette should be the one to stay. Sell a Bamian. You know, it's a bit of a madness, but. I don't know, man. It doesn't look like he's looking after himself well enough and he looks to be declining, man. Has have injuries and whatnot got to him? It is what it is, man. No, for real. Hey, Musa, I got you, bro. Don't worry, man. <laughs> Everyone wants the blue spanner now, man. But no, listen, do you know <laughs> what? I see, I see a video yesterday of Lacazette um, on Twitter and it was like his best his best goals at Arsenal. And I thought, you know, if, you, if you'd never watched him play and you just saw that, you would think this guy is unbelievable. Like mm. when you and and in big games as well, Liverpool, Man United, Tottenham, you know, he scored, but ultimately just hasn't worked. And I think from now till the end of the season, you maybe have him as the backup striker off the bench, play him in Europa League. And but yeah, it's interesting. Maybe we'll we'll struggle to get an offer for him in the summer. It could be it could be a case of letting him go on a free, like you said. I mean, I can't believe we rejected the Roma offer in the yeah. summer, but maybe maybe it came a little bit too late. Um, so Bozlai uh, scores the yeah. winner last night, gets Hungary into the Euros. Now, you know, I'll be honest with you. I didn't see much of this guy play, to be honest. In the past few weeks, I've been trying to like catch up and see what he's about. And the more I've seen of him, I've kind of thought... Feeling him in it. I, I, yeah, I like him. You know, I'm looking at him and thinking, maybe him over our, if we can only get one mm. of the two. I mean, he's got a 25 million release clause. I believe he's 20 or 21. Oh, he's going to pay for himself when the other people come calling. Bruv, worst case scenario, you're going to make your money back. If if he's an absolute, if it flops, you're going to get your money back guaranteed. I was very small. I always worry about small centre midfielders. Unless you're exceptional, like, you know, Santi Cazorla or you're the other player like Kante where you can just hunt down anything that moves. Arsenal, he's going to have to improve defensively a lot. But I like him. I like that he never hides. He's played well in big games in the Champions League. He comes alive in, in, and, in and around the, the final third. He's got a shot on him. He could take a free kick. Like you said, the price tag for me, you know, the only thing is, are we going to lose out to these German teams? I know his agent has said there's nothing been agreed with Salzburg, but you know that's the thing. If you're Dortmund and these teams, do you go for that? Like, he's in the Champions League. I do think we can attract him, but if we was to look at it the other way, what is bringing him here? Why wouldn't you go to Dortmund? You go to Germany, a tougher league. You go to a team where they develop, man. You know, you're playing Champions League football. Everyone else is young too. You know that move. Real Madrid apparently won him now. You know, Real Madrid, you got a couple of young players there. It's not really Galactico. Do you go no. there? I would take either one, man. But I'd say if you had to push me, maybe Shabazz like more because of the price tag in. Are Arsenal going to pay them bans for our? Well, probably not. I think it, it, a real club goes for both because I think both would be yeah. wavy. But that's yeah. crazy, man. Yeah, man. No, I agree. I mean, I think now the problem is I think we have to use money to sign players now. You know, we have to throw crazy wages at man and all of a sudden they're saying, oh, Arsenal was my dream club and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So I think I think that's what we're finding. We're not that attraction that we used to be, especially with no Champions League football as well, man. It's, it's a little different. Um, big up Gio. He said, deluded, you guys had been at, so, um, in your academy and your scout said he wasn't good. Now PSG, Barca and City want him. Your scouts have let you down. I'm going to stop him there. I agree with you. Arsenal have let us down, but not the scouts. It's, it's documented and Benassi himself said he was presented with another contract, but he wasn't really feeling the loan spell. They were a bit iffy in relation to first team football. That's where Arsene Wenger and the coaches have messed up. Our scouts have done a lot of stupid stuff, but that's a coaching method. And like you said, congratulations to him, man. I'm, I'm envious for Arsenal, but I'm proud of that lad because one of my first videos, at the time Coughlin was playing, and I said he's better than Coughlin. He could do what Coughlin does and he can pass a ball forward. It's ironic because you look at the amount of work rate he covers and stuff, he'd be perfect for us in the system. And he's linked with City. Apparently Pep Guardiola is seduced by him. 50 million release clause becomes active in the summer. We had the option to buy him back. We didn't. You know, Empoli Crazy. are going to make a healthy percentage. Shagged ourselves, man. Between him, Gnabry, Marlon, you know, Musa now at Valencia, wish I had a decision. And I know people, are, Arsenal fans wank a lot over youth players. You know, when Amici left, people were crying. With Balogun leaves, people are crying. Bear man have left, but that's an L, bro. That's an L. Bielik man were crying, but that's it's a serious L. You know, he's better than at least two, three of these midfielders without naming them instantly mm. the only part is the one that talks to him they'd be great together bro I can't, I can't believe they didn't buy him back when they had the option you know even if you just buy him to make profit on him like it's a no-brainer surely 
serious. It's not serious, bro. We don't do serious stuff, man. We don't do serious stuff. Someone's spamming. I see them saying, would you yeah. take Pepe and get Gnabry back? That's a no-brainer. Gnabry, Gnabry ain't going to come back to Arsenal, bro. No chance. I mean, he asked Koi a couple of times. He's be saying stuff like, oh, if I have to, I'll do what I can. And yeah, yeah. But yeah. Gnabry, in an instant, Pepe can go for Gnabry. Are you mad? Yeah. What, what, do you make, what do you make of Pepe? You know, we paid huge money for him. In fact, I remember again doing a supporters club where we were talking about him Zaha. William. Zaha oh, yeah. and, uh, and at the time I was saying, you know, I think we messed up big time not getting Zaha, but I, I did agree. expect more from Pepe than what I've seen, to be honest. Do you think he needs to up his own game or do you think Arteta is mismanaging him? Because I see... Pepe almost firing shots at Arteta in that interview that he did the other day, saying I'm training hard and still not getting picked. I think there's you can't, there's not really one side really to look at this or, or stand on better yet because first and foremost for Pepe, I do think he could have done a lot better for him. I'll, I'll cut him some slack in a sec, but I think he can have done a lot better. I would have thought his intelligence or in-game intelligence, specifically decision-making, would be to a higher level or we'd see more of an active improvement because you could see just by watching him on YouTube or when we, you know, when we sign him, we do the YouTube or we watch old games, you can see he's not the finished product. He was never a £70 million player and never. probably from the start was never, ever going to justify that price tag. But at the same time, like, I, like we thought it would be a bit better and whatnot. And he's not quite as intelligent as I thought. And I think he needs to not be like Omri. But I did a video about this today. I said, you've got to be confident. You know, the fans will turn on you. The manager might, you know, you might turn on yourself, but you've got to pull away. He's got to channel that confidence. I think he can be a bit demanding of his teammates. He's a bit more demanding. Show his frustration a bit more. He's a bit passive. That being said, you know, I don't think he, he's come at Arsenal where it's been a turbulent time. We've, we haven't played to his strengths or Aubameyang's in terms of knocking it in behind, you know. And I think to this this season, you know, he looked better towards the end of last season under Arteta because he bought into whatever Arteta said. He was confident. He was playing quite well. You know, that was his best period for Arsenal at the end of the year. Something's mm. happened that's been rubbed out. And I hear what Arteta is saying about training. Maybe he wants him to be so upset and so angry that he's not playing that even if he gets 20 minutes he grabs it and i hear that i understand it yeah, yeah. i mean it's difficult you know to, to not be used and then being thrown in against man city for 30 odd minutes 20 odd minutes well 90 minutes in that game initially after only getting 20 and 30 games before and make something happen and when i think about it i hear what with what um arteta is saying about pepe and i agree but then I look at William and I say, right, cool, if you don't want to play Pepe, why can't you play Nelson or somebody else? Because if I'm any of them players and I'm looking at it, I'm training hard. I'm doing what he can. I'm, I need to be given an opportunity to prove I'm playing well. And when William's just dropping mediocre performance upon mediocre performance, I don't get it. So I'd be quite frustrated with him. His personality needs to be a bit more demanding. He, he's a bit, he seems a bit of a shy character. So there's a lot more to come in that regards and the decision making. But you need an opportunity. And I just feel, even if you, you know, I'm not saying I don't want Pepe to improve. I'm not saying we can't have frustrations. I'm not saying you can't call him a flop. But you look at it, you look at the numbers last season, even a mediocre Pepe, you're seeing levels. You see, look at the yeah. statistics. You look at the statistics. It's, it's It, it could be a lot better, man. I want Pepe to play, man. Like, Pepe needs to play a lot more. He needs to do a lot more. I see Ali saying I'm backing Pepe over Arteta. And I've been seeing a couple of his comments. He's been mm. on a on a, on a mad one, man. But you know, he's probably just a troll. But it's it's down to Pepe to give him no opportunity, but to not leave him out. But you need an opportunity to do that. You said it perfectly in my last thing, and I agree with you. My my lineup, you put a bad man through the middle, and let's hope he gets back to scoring ways. Saka on the left because whatever you demand from from a Bamian going backwards, Saka can do that in my opinion. Yeah. Go with Pepe, like I'd rather the frustrations and inconsistencies of Pepe than this. This this what William because I've got no inspiration behind William. You know, no, William no, no. can't do any worse in my opinion. He's just mad no. meaty. His body like a lot of people talk about Pepe's body language, and I'm not one to keep talking about that stuff. But William's body language is the same. I just feel he's William probably... looks old, bro. William looks tired to me. <laughs> like <laughs> demand it. He, he's he's a, it's a myth, bro. It's a myth. Like I think Pepe should get more game time, but it's mm. not to say I'm backing Pepe and he's the best guy and whatnot. I just can't understand William. Like William's not justifying in his lineup. So and yeah. that's why why he isn't playing because he favors William. Mm. Just simply it's like it's like it's like Southgate and Grealish, you know. It's like deep down them and they're you know we're football fans, we've got opinions. I just don't think Jack Grealish is good is, is Southgate's thinking. I just mm. don't rate my man. 
Pepe. Mm. I think that's of the sake. I think if, if Arteta could, he'd cut his losses quick down. I think he would. Uh, I, th I think in the summer he might look at that as well. I, I think he would let Pepe go. Um, big up side Tyson with the super chat. He says, big up Curtis, great content as always. Thank you very much. Big up everyone in the chat. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the Luda's channel as well. Um, um, yeah, the thing with Pepe for me, I think he has to do more definitely. But I kind of look at it now and think, has he been given, like, if we sold Pepe, right, if we got to January and sold Pepe, I think I'd turn around and say, we haven't really given him a fair opportunity in the team. I don't think yeah. I don't think he's started five games in a row since he's been at the club. Like, if I'm coming from France, I've only had like, a good 18 months in the French League. I've come to the Prem, 72 million. I'm coming into a team that is struggling as well. It's not like we was on fire. He hasn't really had an opportunity to build a relationship with a right back. And we also don't create a lot of chances. I'm kind of thinking, yo, you lot have kind of done me dirty here a little bit. Like, okay, I haven't been great at times, but you haven't even given me the best opportunity to do well. So I think Arteta between now and the end of the season, I think he's just got to say, you know what, forget Willian. Give this guy a chance. And then if I get rid of him in the summer, I can say to everyone, I gave him the run. He wasn't up to it. And I moved him on. No one can argue. For me personally, it goes back to what I've been saying even to the Mustafi days in that when these players have come in or players we've signed have been good players, but it just doesn't scream like there's a beyond signing these players. It's like fans buying these players. All right, we bought Pepe, yeah. but what are we buying? It's like, like you said, and, and that's the best thing um, for, for, for these people if they're not going to take anything from this to take from you. You said he's had a good 18 months. Anyone that pre him in France, you knew he had an exceptional 18 months. Prior to that, it was up and down. So why didn't the club know, okay, cool, Look at the player we're getting. He's not the finished article. How many times has he lost the ball? Specifically, what is he bad at? Forget why he's good. We know why he's at the club for that whatever reason. What is he bad at and how can we work on it? And it's it's like we know he's a winger. We know he can take man 1v1 and we know he can link up well and play in tight spaces. But why is, haven't we got the consistency? In the same way, I know Torreira's problems were different, probably off the field. But we've identified this man as a ball winner. Why didn't it work? When those, his attitude shagged himself. Why didn't it work? Xhaka, who I think isn't my cup of tea, but isn't the worst oh. midfielder on the planet. Why did we sign him? And why is there that question mark? You know, yeah. Mr. came into this club. Why didn't it work out as to why he's meant to be the centre-half with Kishoni? So there's really something to be said into the, not the type of player we're buying. Sometimes they're not good enough, clearly. But it's like, what are we actually trying to do with these men? Lacazette, yeah. you know? If we, 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 even if we clock, all right, we made a mistake. He's not a consistent goal scorer. What are going on for this thing? We're not, we're not, we're not patterning at all. We're not, man. And like you said, if he was to leave in Jan, you know, he could only have himself to play because football's fickle. You're not, you're not doing the business. But he hasn't been given a proper fair crack. There has been little elements of his play, and it goes back to like. It's like me with Pepe and even Ozil to a degree and Leno. Like, I know Ozil needs to go. But when you're looking at this squad or even Torreira and Guendouzi, the people that are linked with Muse or the people that have gone, are they necessarily the first ones that need to come out of this club? I'm not saying they don't need no. to go, but They're are not. they the first immediate? Maybe Ozil because of the contract. But on ability, are we really agreeing with things like there's 27 men, there's 25 men in this squad better than Ozil? And again, we're not Ozil's biggest defenders. He needs to be moved on. Just in terms of trying to make sense of stuff, I don't really care if Pepe plays um, or not. But make sure William's bloody doing the business. Then I can say, I right, yeah. Pepe. I don't mind a bad man playing through the flanks, regardless of me wanting him to play through the middle. Make sure Lacazette's scoring. When it's not, we can't, we have to talk about these things. And that's how fickle football is. Fundamentally, that's it. And that's what they need to yeah. do better. And like you, you made an interesting point as well, man. Pepe ain't got a... He ain't had a right back. Like, you know, I think there's no coincidence. Be um, Maitland-Niles plays better with him than Bellerin. But at the yeah. same time, does Arteta believe in Maitland-Niles' capabilities on the right-hand side or in a back four? Because Bellerin's going to play any of the formations. I only am seeing Maitland-Niles come in when somebody needs to play left wing back. And how many times yeah. are we going to do that a season? Ideally, not too much because you want to see us gradually move to a back four. And that's what goes back to tactically. I don't mind a back five, bro. But when I look at City, with all due respect, whether it's a three, four or five, they still try and go forward. It's only yeah. a problem because we ain't got no plans. Like It's, 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 it's so frustrating because as a fan, you're yeah. helping. Like you can not that we know everything. I know everyone thinks they know it. We get things wrong all the time, but it's like it's so you can see things, and they're not like it's not like you can call someone and say, "Listen, boom, don't do that." And it's like 
we're you continuously making bad, not even decisions, just bad choices. We're choosing to do stupid stuff at this moment. Like it's mm. crazy, bro. It's crazy. No, it's mad, man. I mean, do you know what? I just wonder what Arteta is trying to do. Like what? What is his plan? I remember at the back end of last season, he was saying, ideally, I would like to go to a, a back four, you know, mm. and then he hasn't gone to a back four. But to me, it's like even Tierney in the last few games, probably apart from Man United, starting to make mistakes, get caught out of position. He is not a full-time centre-back, you know, he can play oh. there in a crisis. So you've got Bellerin playing right wing-back, who I don't really rate Bellerin, but he's better at right-back than right wing-back. You've got Tierney playing centre back, who should be at left back. You know, you've got a Bamiang left wing. You got there's more questions than answers. Someone just put there in the comments, why did we sign Pablo Mari and Cedric Suarez? Why? I mean I think Suarez probably with Bellerin, Bellerin, I mean not Bellerin, with Maitland now's in mind leaving and we've been shagged. But again, why did we make <laughs> <laughs> I see, him in four years. <laughs> I like I see someone I see someone in the comments said uh, Maximus Gen Gen whatever in it. Maximus yeah. is you don't mind a five at the back. This guy contradicts himself so much. Football is contradictory. And this is where you lack brain cells. I said specifically, I don't want to see a five at the back, but I am yeah. not the manager. The manager can play five at the back as long as his philosophy is to pass the ball forward. I don't want yeah. William to start. William plays. I shut my mouth as a fan. Please use your brain cells, man. I'm going to ask Fingy to block you, car. We're trying to have <laughs> a conversation. And it's been good, but you've got idiots. Right? Like, just take a second and calm yeah. down. I do think Arteta's been a bit of a mouthpiece of, as, as well, bro, because he does talk a good yeah. game, you know. I think he's prepared to... to the board have said, you're going to take the flat for this Ozil thing, or they pull it at his feet, and he said, all right. Because think about it logically, bro. If you, you know the pressure you're on. You know this is your first job. Forget Arsenal. You want your first job to go well. Do you look at that side? If you're in, in, in any job... If you're given a job, if you're given a job, it's like being a builder. If I'm not given a safety hat, I'm gonna make sure I either buy one or you give me back my old one that I had in my previous role. You know, exactly. we're looking at it now. So why am I looking at it? We're talking about creativity. We know we lack creativity. Ozu wants to go. We want to move Ozu on. So why are we not bringing in another man? Or why are we not registering Ozu um, to do something? If if that's what the board is saying, I'm saying to the board, listen, I cannot do my job. Unless you bring me something or register my man. So he said, okay, cool. It's acceptable for me to take the blame. That's why I can't even get on to people when they get on to him because he set himself up for failure, really and truly. It's a madness, man. You know, if it's saying January, because one thing that worried me about that Ornstein um, report he did was he's talking about summer transfers. Now, yeah. that tells me that maybe they ain't going to do a lot or anything in January. Um you know, in fact, Arteta's talking about the squad's too big. Never mind adding to the squad. He's talking about players going out and Smith Rowe and Saliba and these guys. Would you bring Meza Ozil back in January? Oh boy, if you're not gonna if you're not gonna sign someone, you have to. Like you have to. You have to. It's like this is this is where it comes down to egos. The only problem, the only re you need an ego, but the only reason he doesn't bring him in is is the ego thing. He's talked him out of it, so he can't. When you've now put your ego, what have you done? You've put your ego in ahead of the collective. So subconsciously, you said you're more important than the team. For the team, the best thing right now would be to utilize Mesut Ozil in some capacity. If he yeah. plays crap again, you know, like Ar like Arteta Emre had, sorry. I've played him, you know, I've cried for him. He's not done no dirt. You know, you yeah. need, if you're not going to sign somebody on loan in January or you're not going to bring someone in permanently, you know, with COVID, with January being notoriously hard, with the fact we've got no money, you have to. Or bring someone else in from the academy or whatever. He's not going to, he's not helping himself at all. He's not mm. helping himself. Bro, I see, I see um, a video you did earlier today where we were being linked with, Jerome Boateng and um, Christian Eriksen, I think, as well. I see. Uh, I, was, I was chatting about Eriksen still. I wouldn't mind taking him on loan. He wouldn't be my first thing, but if we're desperate, why not? It won't happen, but why not? No, but Boateng, I mean, we've been linked with him for a while. I'm even seeing Bayern might be willing to cash in on him in January. I know he's a free at the end of the season. We wouldn't be, You wouldn't be in too much favour of that deal, surely. No, man, like, listen, I don't think Boateng will be the worst of players. We could talk about experience, a proven winner, and all these things that have been said for bare players that have come into this team. But it's just creating another problem. Again, I still, I think we need to sign a, a, a slightly more experienced centre-half. I know Marie's there, but we'd, we'd have Saliba, ideally. We'd have Gabriel. And I'm sure I speak for you as well when I, 
I back that partnership, but there's going to be times you're going to see the age of that. So can we get someone a bit more seasoned in that regards, a bit more, a bit older and things? I wouldn't mind that. Um, mm. I wouldn't go for Boateng because you can't get rid of Louise and bring in Boateng. Like, it's not going to make sense for the wages. No. Go on. If I'm Boateng, I'm trying to get two-year deal, three-year minimal, you know. If, if I'll turn cool. around if William can get that, then what, I'm 32 or 30-something, I can get <laughs> yeah. that. Let me yeah. see how old he is. He must be like 32. If I William think he is. And that's what his agent's going to say. What, well, I'm a Champions League winner. I want three years. That's it, yeah. And then we're shaking ourselves again. <laughs> no, nah, man, we have to leave that one, man. We have to leave that one. Go and scout. A, a le go and find someone with a lesser profile that isn't going to be too expensive, that's going to be about 25 plus, 26 plus, that can complement this side and help mm. when required. Simple as, man. Yeah, I agree. Get your questions in. Um, we've been going for an hour. We'll wrap this up shortly. So let me just get a oh. few questions in. Uh, he says, thoughts on Torreira and Guendouzi. Surely they're better than our current midfielders. Thoughts on Arteta regressing the youngster. I mean, we spoke about the youngsters, but what do you think about Torreira and Guendouzi? Do you think Do you think actually those two will end up coming back to us? I think it would. I think both of if if. It was done tomorrow. Both of them would have to because, you know, I don't see her for Billy making his thing permanent. True say they bought Tussart, so they could. Um, but I yeah. think he would come back and he'd have two years. He'd have the same length as Lacazette. So there's a decision to make. I think Torreira's got one year more. If we look at it, Atletico might keep him permanently. But in terms of the game time, he isn't necessarily playing too frequent. He isn't necessarily the first option. They brought in Condogbia. They might say they might say they might as well come back to us. Um, I think they might probably temporarily come back. And I would actually love to see both of them reintegrated. But I can't see it happening, my guy. I think both of it's kind of off-field problems as to why it hasn't happened. Torreira just maybe just hasn't quite settled. You know, the language barrier, all of these things. Guendouzi, we hear he has kind of pissed off Arteta frequently since he's come in and did stuff under Emre. And then obviously... Um, the whole Brighton thing, he made his bed. If he kept his mouth shut, he's probably still here, to be fair with you. But I just feel them off-field matters means they're gone. They shouldn't have been the ones to go. But when you look at it collectively, you know, they're probably two of the only players that you're going to see anybody kind of inquire for. There isn't too many players in this Arsenal team that you can say other teams, if I was another fan or whatever, I'd try and buy and things like that. They ain't going to help us. Re help them really, really, is it? It's a mm. bit of a matter. Yeah, Gwen Doozy for me is a is a, a tricky one. I feel like if he has a good year in Germany, French under twenty one captain, I wouldn't be completely against bringing him back. I mean, I'm not saying I would start him every week, but I just think there's something in Gwen Doozy where you can see him becoming a French international. You can see that he's got a bit of bite about him. I just think. He needs to mature a little bit and shape that kind of attitude in the right way. So, but again, he's Arteta too stubborn that he's not going to allow him to come back. Mm. Um, I think it's it's like I think when Dozy and to, and Ozil, it's it's just the problems that's been facing them, and them and they are gone. Like I don't even. I think even if he plays well, it's it's, a, it's like Chesney. When Chesney went on loan, he did well. We we're saying, could we bring him back? He was off to Juventus. I think. It's a you made your bed lying it thing. Whatever happens, I don't want you here, sort of thing. I would like him to come back, but I think it's gone, bro. Do you, do you think Arteta's a little bit of like I don't wanna I don't wanna disrespect him, but like is he like a disciplinarian school teacher in that? If you've got a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, he's just not feeling you like Ozil has got a big ego, Gwen is a bit of a character as well. Like, do you think Arteta's got a little bit of a problem with these players? I do think he's a bit funny in terms of the attitude and the stuff he wants, but I don't necessarily think he's a strictler. I just see it as he's come into the role. He's needed to nip man in the bud really quickly. The Ozil thing is an interesting debate because we, we, we've kind of spoken at lengths and whatnot. I just think Gwendozi's peed me off, peed him off, and he's not on it. He's like, you know what? I've come from City. I want a Barryman to sign a new deal. I want these men to respect me. This Gwendozi brother's been here for two minutes. He, you know, I have to nip that in the bud because if he can get away with that, what other man going to think they can get away with? Torreira, mm. clearly it's a commitment issue. Maybe it was tactically, but maybe his head wasn't in it. So it got wrapped up. I do think he's a man for, I, I do think he's a man for that, but he does scream like, he can, I don't think he's a strict, I think he can have fun. He can take himself, you know, he doesn't have to take himself seriously, but uh, yeah, man, I definitely feel he's a bit weird in that regards to a degree. But mm. I, I don't think them and there made their beds. I don't think it was anything because we heard we heard a has got a problem and we know a has a big character. But clearly, 
something's gone all right. We know based on social media that Lacazette and Mustafi are big characters, so they've gone all right. I think with the Ozil one, it's interesting because it, like 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 you said earlier, you know, it's the the board and then Arteta. We'll never quite know with that one there. Really. Mm. Looking ahead, then the next three games, um, I think these three games are really going to shape Arteta's career at Arsenal. I, I think they're that big. How many points do you think? How many points do you think we will get out of them next three games? Not obviously, we'd all like nine, but looking at them honestly, how many do you think we'll get? Bro, I'm I'm hoping for three to four. So in Arsenal fashion, we probably get one or none in it. You're hoping for three to four, oh, you know. <laughs> I want nine. I want nine. I want nine, six to nine. But we, we might get none or one. You might get a little draw there. Like, I'm begging them. If they're going to act up, give me a four points. And they're calling it. Like, four is at the current, bro. Oh, I'm I can't you. six to nine. But them man there don't want it as much as me. They I want thought he was going to say seven or six. A man bro, said, yo, I, I three or that. four. It's acting. Like my man just said, I reckon zero points. Bro, the way they're playing, I can't back them. They're going to make me you look here and say, oh, I see why you're called deluded and all of that nonsense, man. <laughs> yeah. Myth. Myth. Six to yeah. nine, Grace. Give me three, four. I'm a bit more positive, in it? Like, I, I've already mentally accepted zero or one or a madness or three or <laughs> three. Like, maybe three points, but like spread it over all them games. It's a mad thing. Like, no, no. <laughs> oh, bro. Oh. I swear, I weren't expecting you to say that, you know. I thought you was going to oh. say, yeah, maybe six or seven. Man oh, said, oh, oh. Humbled, man. Always, like, man's humble already, but no. when, when you, man, start doing madness, I'll start assuming, yeah, we'll beat Spurs, we'll turn over Wolves, we'll do something against Leeds. I don't want to say, this whole video, I ain't even bad man Leeds. No, I don't want to right. hear this team and be on me. I don't want Bielsa to do what they're doing at Ellen Road. I'm praying that his player, his team have an off day. You know, the Spurs one, I want to see a bit more desire and heart and personal. I want to, that, that team there is down to the players. That game, apologies, because the players messed it up. I remember what, we let ourselves down from a set piece or something. Lacazette scored a banger. We need to pattern that game. Wolves, that's a difficult one. You know, I want to see us turn up away from home, more, most importantly. And we can't feel sorry for ourselves, bro. But I'm shook, my guy. I'm shook. I can't <laughs> sit here and lie, but I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm oh, sure. my days. It's crazy, isn't it, man? It's crazy. Um, oh, man. It's mad how Mourinho's kind of doing at Tottenham, in it? Because, you know, he's even playing slightly different to how I expected him to play, to be honest. Like, they've, scored, they? scored, they've scored 18 goals. No, they're still scoring mad goals. They're still scoring mad goals. I still think he's adding a bit of grit and determination, but... And again, I don't want to sound like a sour Arsenal fan and stuff. I, you know, away from the banter, I respect what Spurs are doing and no bias. But it's like, I just feel people are rushing to praise them because, you know, they have they have looked very good in games. But you look at the West Brom result, you look at, you know, the game was it against Newcastle, it's focused on, on VAR, but they didn't put their yeah. chance away. The draw against um, West Ham are highlighted for every reason. They're still making games harder than these. Yeah, they're still a bit shaky defensively. But Jose's doing his thing. They're atta- He's found a balance. They're attacking. There's a bit more of a grit. I just feel in general, people are, are just drawing way too many conclusions when all these Premier yeah. League teams look booky. Like, if you was to ask every Premier League set of fans, I think Leicester, Southampton and Villa... They'd probably be the most positive fans right now. Everyone else yeah. would have positive and negatives and whatnot and be a bit, ah, uh, but it is what it is, man. Shout out to Jose. I was about to say shout out to Spurs, but shout out to Jose only, boy. And he's proving you right in terms of you wanting Jose and whatnot. I know you get a lot oh, yeah, of yeah. I, got a, I still get criticised for that now, bro. Man, st- I still, an opinion. Bro. Bro, as I always said, whatever works out best for our club, that's all I'm interested in. I'd okay. rather people jump on me in the comments and say, yo... You got it wrong, man. I'll say, cool, as long as it benefits us, I don't mind that. You know, I'd rather rather that. But listen, I mean, Arteta, he's got to change. He's got to change. If he gets these next three games... I'll tell you what, Arteta's look at his no fans in the stadium because he would have got booed after Villa. You know our fans are not patient, bruv, at the best of times. The Villa Villa one would have been a horrible experience for him and, 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 and the team. And one thing that... I don't know. I I I, I kind of cut him the courtesy, and I cut it, I cut the courtesy to Uno Emre's because I just think when you're managing this club and you're actually preying it, I just think there's a madness, you know, that nobody knows. That it just something makes you mad because I remember Arteta kind of touched on something. He didn't go in specifics, but he's like, 
when I took over, I knew there was a lot to do in it because I came before and I was with City and they beat us. But when I when I got into the role, I saw just how much work there was to do. And it, it did, I got the vibe. He wasn't necessarily just talking about tactics. He was talking about every effing fragment. Like, mm. I don't comprehend how fractured and how bad Arsenal Football Club are right now as a result of years and years of bad decisions. And, you know, we failed to do the business off the field, so we're not doing it on it. Direct consequence of failing on the field now means we're losing more money off it and now we can't go back to buying players. And that's where, you know, everybody needs to want to be a winner. For, for every, all the criticisms of Arteta, you know, he wants to be a winner. Does the board. That comment you just brought up, I hope we win all nine, all three games and get nine yeah, points. We can, we can all pray. We can all pray, innit? it? That's I all we can do. Like an idiot. Da, 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 We're going to do this and that. Because the club are going to make me look dumb and get clipped up on YouTube and stuff. And obviously, I want engagement levels and I want to expand the brand. But not like that. Not looking like an idiot. Yeah, not yeah, like yeah. my club and they're not. Myth. You ain't doing it for them reason. I mean, it's someone just said there as well. I see that um Salah's tested positive for COVID. Swear. Yeah. Madness. Crazy, man, crazy out there. Man. I know. But saying that, that might even for our England fans, England fans, what that Irish guy. Oh, so I hope he gets through it. But I saw today some Irish player um that played has COVID now. I don't know what? when he contracted, but that doesn't doesn't that mean that you know what? Oh yeah. Know? Yeah, I just see it. Alan, Alan Brown tested positive after oh, the game. Yeah. Man can't play now. You know, even Jude Bellingham's made his debut. He's probably out of Dortmund now. Saka's probably having to quarantine. You know, even players that didn't play. It's like, what happens then? I know they talk about testing negative and things. And, you know, the last time T and he touched with it, it's not again. But the last time he went off to play, he didn't come back in positive circumstances. You know, we had to fight for him to play. I don't understand mm -hmm. how these internationals are going. I know we've got a Euros at the end, but it's, these players are guinea pigs and it's just peeing off teams. You know, people are getting injured and people are contracting COVID. It doesn't make sense allowing man to fly up and down and all of these sort of things. It's crazy. Sad. Do you know what? Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah, I was going to ask you about that briefly. Like, I mean, you see, I see Nathan Ake got injured. Gomez got injured. I see you did a video about Gomez and that. I mean... Why are we playing international friendlies in the middle of a pandemic? I can understand if you've got to play a qualifier for the Euros. The Euros is next year. I understand that. But why are they playing friendlies during a pandemic? It don't so make no sense. FIFA and UEFA just care about peas. This is just marketing exercises. This is just building up hype to go into the tournaments. You know, Tony Kroos has been chatting a lot of crap about Bamian, but one thing he was right on is how, yeah, bro, one thing he was right on is how we're using, the fan players are being used as guinea pigs. And you look at it, I know man can say, oh, there was, many leagues had a little blackout period. There was no games, but there's been no preseason. The games are coming thick and fast, you know. Arsenal have been playing twice a week, for instance. Then you've got to go off and play in these countries. Then you've got to travel and do the training and all the other things as well. It's a, it's a nightmare. Yeah. And they've not helped them. We've not been helped with. There's no five subs. You know, there's, no. there's these pointless friendlies played. You know, there's not the, the fixtures are not being spaced out. It's a bit of a madness, you know, and this is going to keep happening. You know, you're going to keep getting the part A injuries. You're going to keep seeing Ake breaking down. You're going to keep, bear man, I just, this is going to keep happening. You know, T I don't want to touch wood, but it wouldn't surprise me if Tierney does, if Tierney next game he plays or whatever, isn't injured. I can see it. I can mm -hmm. see it. And I want to be wrong, my guy. I'm not a physio. I'm not a doctor, but I'm scared, bro. I can't lie. Bro, it's crazy because in Europe, I think in La Liga, they're allowed five subs, but the league decided it. In England, they gave the clubs the vote. Obviously, every team in the bottom half was going to say no. So it was always going to work like that. And this is why you're seeing so many injuries. It's crazy, man. I mean, is that going to mean Saka has to quarantine now? I don't know. It's mad. So it's crazy time. Scared. Bro. It's curvy, bro. But listen, my bro, thank you very much for coming on. i got to wrap it up now. Um, Mine big, up everyone in, big up everyone in the comments. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to Deluded's channel as well. Plug your channel, bro, for anyone who don't know. Oh, come on, man. Deluded Gooner on everything. On Just type me in on YouTube. You'll find that. You know, everything else. The at's there. Deluded Gooner 04. Snapchat D Gooner 04 as well. So, yeah, you can find me if you like my ramblings about Arsenal and that, man. Love for having me, Curtis. Come on, Anytime, man. Anytime, bro. We've got to get back on it now. It's got to be regular now. Yeah, man. we got to do this twice a week, man. On your channel, yeah. my channel, and keep going, man. Yeah, man. Because we're wasting time. You have to. Big up everyone in the chat. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm sure you'll be back on your channel tomorrow as well. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bless. Safe.